Right, when you finish a soda, you probably do this, crush the can right before you throw it into the recycling bin. Of course you do. That takes a tremendous amount of pressure, right? You're gonna get a pretty good squeeze to be able to do it. What if I told you that you could learn to crush a can like this without touching it at all? In fact, you're simply gonna hold on to it with a little pair of tongs. And even better, you're gonna dip it in this water right here. It's easy to do, uh, but you're gonna need some things that you can find in the kitchen. We've got a hot plate that's over here, and I have some empty soda cans that you see here. So I emptied out the cans and uh, washed them out, and to those I added just a little bit of water. Not much, but a little bit of water. Okay, these are gonna go on the hot plate, and we are gonna boil the water inside. So because we're using that, it's always a good idea throw on our safety glasses, so we're set. So each of the cans that you see here on the hot plate have just a little bit of water inside, and I can hear, maybe you can hear the water boiling. It's boiling really well. All right, what do you see coming out of the top of the can right here? That's water vapor. That's the water molecules turning from a liquid into a gas. And in fact, those water molecules are moving far, far apart. And as a result of that, it's pushing out all of the air. That's great, because in just a second, we're gonna pick one of these up, turn it upside down, and seal it in the water here, meaning that the very top here will be sealed over a layer of water. We're gonna let the outside air pressure do its job and hopefully crush that can. All right, let's take a look. Here's our tongs. All right, this one is looking good. Here we go, right in the water like this, watch. Bam! And look at all the water that was drawn up inside at the same time. Not only did the outside air pressure push it in, but the water molecules moved together closely, water shot inside, cooled the whole thing down, and you can see it crushed the can with absolutely no problem at all. That means we've got more to go. All right, here we go. Let's try this one here, this is looking good. Upside down, as soon as that is covered, bam, there you go. Here, try this one here. Look at that, the power of air to be able to crush the can. But I know what you're thinking, if this little can is good, what about a bigger can? Let's use this empty solvent can in place of the soda cans to see if there's enough air pressure to be able to crush this big can. So here's what I did. I added a small amount of water to this can, and that's what you see on this burner over here. Now the important part is that we see the water vapor coming out. It's so important to understand that that water is turning from a liquid into a gas, the molecules are moving far apart and actually pushing the air out of the can. So when we seal the can up and we cool it down, we're gonna allow the outside pressure to push in. All right, safety glasses on, safety gloves on. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We'll seal it up like this, nice tight seal. This will come over here. And now, we could just let it cool down, but we want it to happen a little bit faster, so that's where the water comes in. Listen to it, it's talking. Ah, there it goes, look at this. Perfect. That's almost 2,800 pounds pushing on the outside of that can to crush it like this. Well, we've seen how the power of air can crush a metal can, but how do you use this in real life? Well, one example is a machine like this industrial oil filter crusher. This machine pumps air into the cylinder on top, which compresses the air. The compressed air applies 10 tons of crushing force to the piston. Factories and car repair shops use the machines so that the cans they throw out will take up a whole lot less space. That makes them easier to recycle.